It may not always be self-evident, but man is at his core a social creature. Thought of in an optimistic way, this fact may be seen as a great benefit, as communal action is often more efficient and long-lasting than mere individual endeavor. However, it is most clear that our sociability and our need for a collective identity pose enormous threats. As a man living in 2023, this truth resonates deeply, because to put it mildly, our societies are turning mad, and to some extent this has always been the case. Perhaps one might suggest that a little bit of madness is a prerequisite for societies to have any meaning at all, since rationality and truth are forced to take a back seat when going up against the beliefs and emotions of a group. As emotional beings, it is our default position to defend those who are like us, those who have a similar way of looking at reality, those with whom we share a common collective identity. In today's world, people seem more willing than ever to accept immorality and lies to align with their chosen agenda. Politics, for instance, reveals a significant divide between the left and the right which goes beyond mere ideology. This emotional divide reflects our innate desire to belong and be devoted to our own kind, causing us to overlook the common ground we share with those who we deem as not of our kind. But even more importantly, this makes us completely ignore our truest individual beliefs. It makes us lose ourselves in fight club fashion. In this video, I want to showcase what the phenomenon of collective madness can look like, as well as how it is being reinforced by our modern society. First, what does collective madness look like? In its most innocent form, it can be as trivial as playing a game you don't enjoy, or wearing clothes you find repulsive just to fit in with your social group. At first glance, this isn't such an issue, until, of course, it starts to take place in more serious matters. Nobody will be seriously affected by how you dress one day at school, but many millions of lives will be affected and possibly destroyed because of our political choices. Going all in on the eco-friendly all-green agenda, for example, may often lead to politicians enforcing laws that make thousands of people either lose their jobs or lose their access to basic needs like heat and electricity. This is not to say that we should not care about environmental issues, of course. It does mean, however, that we should think independently before blindly agreeing to what our chosen group may believe. Considering the history of the 20th century, one must see the extremes that can be reached through collective madness. It is hard to believe, but Nazi Germany was composed by millions of regular individual persons just like you and me. Millions of them. And yet the spirit of resentment and pain was so potent that even the kindest of souls committed the most atrocious acts. The public executions, the endless tortures, the complete degradation of human lives. All these things were committed one by one, all by single individuals who agreed to have their individuality shaped by the most terrible ideas and sentiments of their group. The same thing goes for the communists of the Soviet Union and of Myers China. Look at events like the Holodomor, where Stalinist ideology made thousands of policemen arrest, imprison, and kill independent farmers and peasants of Ukraine in order to adhere to the ideology of Stalinist Russia. This happened to such an extent that an entire nationwide famine got spread, leading to the death of millions. Large-scale genocides are often read as societal phenomena, and not as individually willed actions. And yet it is true that for any such catastrophe to occur, every individual person must personally decide to commit murders. A thought which, when analyzed deeply enough, can make one's conscience tremble. As we do not typically like to focus on the individual people when viewing things like war. And yet, 
In every such picture, you will see a typical person, in a moment of self-defeat, sell his soul and contribute in his own small way to the atrocity. But why is collective madness particularly important right now? Well, for one thing, it is constantly spreading. Look at movements like Me Too, for instance. At first, the Me Too movement was a place in which women who had been sexually harassed in the past could share their stories openly. However, because the movement rewarded the women who had the courage to speak, the truthfulness within the community started to shrink. More and more women started fabricating stories in order to appear as victims. More and more people started believing these stories blindly, without ever doubting them, because of course, doubting would be seen as treachery to the group. And as a result, even real courts of justice ended up putting men in prison for alleged sexual crimes without sufficient evidence, a process which ignores the most fundamental idea in the justice system, the idea of being innocent until proven guilty. We still see the results of this manifestation of collective madness, as even to this day there are well-educated, intelligent people who will seriously defend these judicial decisions despite knowing full well how unfair they are. At the beginning of the essay, I mentioned how the divide between the ideologies of the right and the left are not really as divided as we might think. Let's take freedom of speech, for example. 20 years ago, freedom of speech was considered one of the central principles of the progressive left. The people on the right were the ones who were supposedly more open to considering censorship and cancellation of ideas. The clearest example being that of anti-communism. From back in the 1950s, conservatives and libertarians of the right had been advocating the banning of communist parties as well as a general censorship of communist ideas. Obviously, these points became less prominent after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, but they remained parts of the agenda for many right-wingers. Left-wing people, and especially left liberals, were those who supposedly wanted to free up the market of ideas. In stark contrast, today the progressive left is that which censors speech, bans ideas, and cancels people. With the emergence of wokeism and the ever-increasing representation of progressive ideology in politics, the left has suddenly taken a hard turn towards an almost totalitarian form of censorship. Most refer to this as cancel culture, with the epitome being the complete banning of Andrew and Tristan Tate across all social media platforms. We have now reached a point where the people in the right have become free speech absolutists. And suddenly, you will hear conservative people articulating the exact same points that the liberal leftists used to articulate in the past. You will hear leftists talking about how some ideas are way too dangerous and infectious to the public and they must be suppressed. Which by the way, was the exact same argument that the conservatives used to use in order to defend their anti-communism. All this is to say that our natural tendency to be part of a herd is so powerful that it can sometimes make us do things that we would never choose to do and believe things that we would never choose to believe. One may derive from this that people are just kind of crazy and that they always have been crazy. But I actually don't think this is exactly right. You see, sure, collective madness is a timeless problem, but it seems that over the last few years this madness has been getting bigger. And in my opinion, this is because of a very important change in our lives. And that is the slow but steady death of solitude. You see, before social media became the kind of mass addiction that it is right now, it was normal for people to have a significant block of time in which they were by themselves. People would use this time in various ways, but the important thing is that during this time they would not get influenced by anyone else other than their own minds. 
In our times, however, you are literally never alone. Social circles have completely invaded your personal space thanks to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and TikTok. You are constantly in the presence of social pressures. These platforms are so addictive that they make most people waste the little time they used to have for themselves. They make them lose their own sense of independent thought, since thought is always dependent on the norms and pressures of those social circles. It is so easy to be a full-time consumer who just recycles the things he sees in order to be a part of the social group. It is so easy that very few will even consider the possibility of trying to think for themselves, which in turn causes collective madness to be an even bigger issue. And sure, there will always be people who are naturally more resilient to collective madness, but these are not the people that I am referring to. I am referring to those who have fallen victims to this powerful tendency and who are willing to take a different route for their lives. The only way to battle against collective madness is to return to the classical principles of individual liberty and independence. To return to critical thinking and the resurrection of the great ideas of the past, since one can only derive good ideas for the future if he has a good sense of the ideas developed by the greats of the past. And in order to accomplish all of this, we must learn to take a step back from social media addiction. We must start engaging in dialogue and discussion with ourselves, in solitude, in quietness. Something that seems almost ridiculous in our age. But it is crucial if we don't want to think things that we would never think and do things that we would never do. Thank you for watching.